Okay, so let's get right into it. You've just spent a small fortune on a huge, crazy fast SSD. You're probably thinking, this thing is the heart of my system, it's gonna last forever. But what if that shiny new piece of tech has a dark secret? What if it's designed to self-destruct when you least expect it? Well, today we're unpacking a cautionary tale that shows why your brand new drive might just be a ticking time bomb. And listen, this isn't just some made up scenario. This is a real headline from a story that blew up in the r slash data hoarder community over on Reddit. One user lived through every tech enthusiast's worst nightmare. A brand new, super expensive drive that just, poof, it died, vanished from the system, gone. And we're not talking about some cheap, off-brand drive here. This was a $700, top-was-the-line, 8-terabyte NVMe SSD. I mean, that's a serious investment. That's the kind of hardware you buy when you want the best of the best. The details are what make this so scary. It was a brand new 8TB Lexar NM790. And get this, it was running in a mirrored ZFS setup. Now, if you know anything about ZFS, you know it's all about data integrity. It was in a Proxmox server, a setup literally designed for maximum reliability. And still, one day, it just disappeared from the system. No warning signs, no slowdowns, nothing. Just gone. In less than four months. So what on earth happened? How does a top-spec $700 drive turn into a very, very expensive paperweight so fast? Well. This whole incident became the perfect case study for a concept that, honestly, anyone who cares about their data needs to understand. The folks in the data hoarding community knew exactly what it was. The diagnosis was immediate and pretty much unanimous, a classic case of infant mortality. It's a well-known thing in electronics. It means a certain number of devices roll off the assembly line with tiny, invisible flaws. You know, a bad solder joint, a micro crack somewhere. These things cause the device to fail super early in its life, and it has absolutely nothing to do with how much you've used it. To really wrap your head around this, we need to look at a classic model from the world of reliability engineering. It applies to pretty much everything, from light bulbs to jet engines. It's called the bathtub curve, and it perfectly explains this mystery of why brand new things can sometimes be the most likely to fail. So this graph right here shows a component's failure rate over time, and you can see why it's called a bathtub. On the far left, that steep drop, that's phase one, the infant mortality phase, where a higher number of units with those hidden defects fail right out of the gate. Then you hit the bottom of the tub, that long, flat, stable period of useful life with a very low failure rate. And finally, on the right, the curve goes up again as the products just get old and wear out. For SSDs, that first phase is the real danger zone we're talking about. And here is the absolute kicker. This drive didn't wear out. I mean, not even close. It was rated for an insane six times petabytes of data to be written to it, but it failed after only 15 terabytes. To put that in perspective, that's like buying a brand new car that's rated for 300,000 miles and having the engine completely seize up after just 750 miles. It tells you that the endurance rating, that big terabytes written number on the box, is far from the whole story. So if it wasn't wear and tear, what was it? Well, the community had some really good insights. See, those endurance ratings are all about the NAND memory chips themselves. But an SSD is a whole system. You've got the controller chip, the power delivery circuits, and as this comment points out, when you cram that much capacity onto a tiny little stick, they can get really hot or be super sensitive to any blips in power. Those things can fail long before the memory itself ever gets close to wearing out. And this brings us to a huge fundamental point that the pros and data hoarders really understand. Not all SSDs are the same. There is a massive difference between a drive made for your gaming PC and one built to run 24-7 in a server. This table breaks it down perfectly. Just look at the design goal. Consumer drives are all about speed and capacity. But enterprise drives, they're built for reliability and uptime. A huge part of that is the hardware inside. Enterprise drives have beefier controllers and, this is critical, advanced power loss protection. We're talking about actual physical capacitors on the board that keep the drive alive just long enough to save data if the power cuts out. 
Consumer drives just don't have that. It's why a tough workload like ZFS can, as one user put it, eat them like candy. Okay, so the problem's pretty clear, right? High-end consumer drives can and do fail out of nowhere, especially when you push them hard. So how do you actually protect yourself from this? Thankfully, the community discussion didn't just stop at the problem. It turned into an amazing survival guide. Let's walk through their game plan. All right, here's the wisdom condensed down. Number one, and the most important thing, always have redundancy. That mirrored setup is what saved our Reddit users' data. Next, it's about using the right tool for the job. Use enterprise-grade drives for those really heavy workloads, and always keep an eye on your temperatures. After that, remember not to trust those marketing numbers blindly, keep your firmware updated, and if a drive fails, get that warranty claim in immediately. So as we start to wrap this all up, it's time for a bit of a hard truth. This story really isn't about one bad drive or even one bad brand. It's about a fundamental misunderstanding of what you're actually paying for in the world of storage. The reality is no brand is perfect. They all have failures. In fact, data from the big cloud storage company Backblaze shows something pretty shocking. Over their entire lifespan, SSDs are only slightly more reliable than old school spinning hard drives. Let that sink in. And their failures are almost always sudden, with no warning, and they often happen within that first year or so of ownership. Your loyalty to a brand isn't going to protect you. And this right here is the key takeaway of this entire explainer. Spending more money on an SSD buys you two things, more space and faster speeds. That's it. What it does not buy you is immunity. It doesn't make you immune to manufacturing defects, to the laws of physics, or just a plain old bad luck. So what's the real protection? It's not a product. It's a mindset. As one user in that thread put it perfectly, you have to follow one simple rule for every single drive you own. Always assume it will die, and that it will happen at the absolute worst possible moment. You have to plan for it. Which really just leaves us with this one last thought. You can go out and buy all the speed and all the capacity in the world. But what actually buys you peace of mind? The answer isn't on a spec sheet, and it's not a price tag. It's in your strategy, your redundancy, your backups, and a healthy dose of paranoia.